Good afternoon. We are almost through the first week of school. This is Thursday, August the 25th. It is so exciting to have the students back into the classrooms and the cafeteria. It's the piece of education that I have been looking forward to since the day that we dismissed back in June. I've got two amazing students from Swain Middle School today and they're going to talk to you a little bit about um, how excited they are to be, be back and maybe why and how it's different than it was a couple of years ago. As a matter of fact, it, let's start over here. I need for you to tell everyone your name, tell everyone what grade you're in, and then I want you to, st to help us understand how is it different this year than it was, let's say, two years ago. Um, my name is Allie Stevenson and I'm in eighth grade. It is very different because in COVID years, the f my first year here at Swain Middle School in sixth grade, it, we were remote when we be, we started school, and we finally got to come back in about the middle. Only two days a week, though, and the rest of the time we were remote, and we were wearing masks. And now, last year, when you were seventh grade, did we start the year in the classroom? I don't remember. Yes. We started in the classroom, and we had masks still. And towards the end of our seventh grade year, we finally got to stop wearing masks, and, and that kind of freed us up a little bit. So I think it would be fair to say that right now uh, you're having the most normal middle school experience of your entire middle school career, true? Yes, we got very lucky that my last year of middle school that we got to stop wearing masks and it was finally normal. And I'll tell you, I don't plan on us going back to mask, and I don't think that anybody does plan on us going back to mask. But we still need to be cautious, and there's still some, some COVID protocol that we need to pay attention to. Like, for example, if we've got symptoms, to, just to be cautious, that's all. Um, but it's dialed way back now. I don't see masks in our future. I'm not even worried about that anymore. I just want to move forward. So I've got you with me, and I believe that uh, you might be one of the Clap Saddle clan. You're one of the Stevenson clan, the Clap Saddle clan. Tell us your full name name and your grade? Um, I'm Ross Clapside. I'm an eighth grader here at Swain Middle School. What are you most excited about coming back to Swain Middle School? What's been the best part? Uh, I've been excited to see my friends again, especially like over the summer I got to hang out with them, but now I get to hang out with them a lot more and see them more and talk to them. And I think that, Ross, that that's, that's really quite important for everyone to understand. While we do focus on academics and extracurriculars and things like that, because there there is a learning process, it's also a social process. It gives us an opportunity to build relationships and to grow and to prepare ourselves for probably after we graduate from high school. You do plan on graduating, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to that now, all right? And I know that your parents would anyhow. Yeah. So, Ross... I know that you're involved in a lot of different things, um, athletically and, and, and other events. If you were to look out across the eighth grade year, what are you looking forward to the most? Um, probably track season. I love track, and I'm excited for Math 1, too. It's a good class. I have a great teacher, and I'm just excited for athletics and just the school year in general. So when we talk about Math 1 at the middle school, Ross, really that's a high school level course, right? Yes, sir. And, and that's one of the few places in middle school where we get to give students the opportunity to get a high school level credit so that when you get to the high school you don't have to start in math one you might be able to start in math two provided you pass that test and I suspect that if either of you are in that class that you're not going to have any problem about that at all thank you for being here now we you may notice that we're standing out beside the cafeteria and we're doing that intentionally because right now I want to give a shout out to a group of people who um, have helped us and are going to continue to help us. Now you may think that this is a, a political statement and it is not in any way. Uh, many people don't realize that all of our school lunch, school breakfast are not fully paid for. Okay. As a matter of fact, what we know is right now, if a student like you, Ross, or, or like you, w want to purchase a full breakfast and a full lunch, it costs $5.75 a day. And if you just do simple math, this is not even math one, okay, it costs a little more than $1,000 a year for a student to buy both breakfast and lunch every day across 180 days of school. Um, we do not have funding, we do not receive funding that enables us to provide free breakfast and free lunch for every single student. However, our local government, our commissioners, is partnering with us to ensure that at least at the K-12 
kindergarten through fifth grade level, we're able to supply every student with free breakfast and free lunch. Now, I would love with all of my heart to be able to come in here and say, you guys get free breakfast and lunch, you know? But what I've calculated recently is if we were to do that for all of our middle school and high school, it would cost us over $700,000 a year. Now, people may be asking, how come the government doesn't pay for that? And this is a very important part. It's because the food and nutrition program in our public school systems is not funded by state dollars. And it's only minimally funded in other ways, okay? This is the first time that the state government has actually said, we're going to help you a little bit, but it's still not enough. So the people that work in here almost work for a different organization. They work for the food and nutrition program that is part of Swain County Schools. And this has to be self-funding. It has to pay for itself. It has to be self-proficient. So whenever you buy uh, lunch or breakfast and, and you pay for that yourself, you're actually helping pay their salaries as well as pay for the food and even pay for some of the equipment that's in here as well. Most people don't understand that. Now, I am grateful to our local government that they are willing to do that, but I want you to know that we are looking for other resources that may help us do something different. I don't know if we'll be able to do that this year, but I think that there is a better chance that we'll be able to next year so that when you get to high school, perhaps, perhaps, we can fund it then. Now, what you can do is this, and this is very important. If you have not filled out a free and reduced form, which is online, and we're going to post the link for that. If you have not filled that out, please do. Because our free and reduced opportunities through the government, not local government, but through federal government, allows for us to pay for more food and helps reduce the burden in other places. Now, I did some research with uh, Michelle Heron, who is over food and nutrition, and what we discovered is that as of about two days ago, we have 1,111 students that are not qualifying for free or reduced. And it could be that that's because perhaps you haven't filled out a free and reduced form, or maybe your neighbor hasn't, or someone in your family. Please, let me encourage you to use the link that we're going to provide both now and also in, in the YouTube format where you find this uh, Maroon Devil Network presentation. Would you please go there? and fill out a free and reduced, even if you think that you don't qualify. Right now we have about 700 students in Swain County that are qualifying for free and reduced support somehow. I want to see that go up, okay? So please, help us do that. Now, I think that's enough for today. You've stood here in the hot sun for long enough. Ross and Allie, thank you so much for your time. And I know both of you personally, and I know your families, and you are amazing leaders for our school and for our, our school system. So thank you for being that. We truly do appreciate you and your families, and we appreciate you as well. Thank you for supporting our school system. We'll be back next week with a different set of students at a different school, and we're just going to keep talking about all the great things that Swain County Schools brings to our community. Until then, thank you for being part of our family. Thank you for letting us be part of yours. And until we see you again, God bless you and have a great day.